Welcome back, everybody. Today, I'm gonna to show you the best ways to power your Arduino projects. You've built an amazing Arduino project. The very first step before you start just plugging things in is to find the operating voltage for whatever board you're using. Here I am on the Arduino website for our Uno and scrolling down, the input voltage recommended is that seven to 12 volts. Now you could stretch it further and do six to 20, but that tends not to be a good idea because now towards 20, your onboard regulator is gonna start running real hot and you know what that means. Heat and electronics are not good friends, so you're gonna shorten the lifespan of your board. For my Arduino project, I only have a few low power components, so they can all be powered directly from the Arduino. I have a PIR sensor, and this motion sensor is going to set off these other components. I have the signal line going to the Arduino, but it's getting its power from the Arduino as well. And these two wires right here then go into the five volt and ground of my Arduino Uno. My labels are pretty much rubbed off. This Arduino has seen a lot of Halloween projects. The same is true for my MP3 player module. You can see the positive and negative also tapping into this power rail. And finally, no Halloween project is complete without the red glowing eyes, am I right? So what's the best way to power something like this? Method number one, which is the easiest, is to use this USB port, but instead use it with a power bank. Now let's see what happens when an unsuspecting trick-or-treater walks by. Here there be pirates. Oh, it's a pirate prop. All right, because you know, Here can't have Halloween pirates. without pirates. The next option for powering your self-contained Arduino project is my personal favorite, and that is the barrel jack. And this is a little bit different than powering through the USB because we sent in five volts, everything worked fine. But all the other ways of powering your Arduino is going to introduce some voltage drop. So if you stick five volts in here, you can get a voltage drop of anywhere from one to 1.5 volts. So instead of getting five, it's going to be getting something like 3.5. And that's nowhere near enough to run this thing. The barrel jack gives you two options, and that is batteries or a wall adapter. Your first option are AA batteries, and you are going to need six of them to make up nine volts. Six batteries makes for a whopping battery holder, so I tend not to go this route. Next up is your nine volt battery, and these are great for prototyping, testing, but they don't have the best capacity. So your project is not gonna last very long with the nine volt. The nice thing about your barrel jack is that it does have polarity protection. So it is a center positive male plug that you're gonna need. But if you plug in the wrong thing, it's generally no big deal. Here there be pirates. Works just as good, just not gonna last as long. So now we're moving on to my favorite battery option the rechargeable lithium ion batteries, and in particular, these 18650s. These are now 3.7 volts, so you're getting more oomph in terms of voltage. And as for amp hours, you can get different ratings. For instance, the yellow one is 3200 and the green one is 99. So the green one is gonna last you a lot longer before recharges. And you're also going to need the battery holder that goes with them. They're a lot taller. So with two of these, 3.7 times two, you're getting 7.4. So you're within range. A three pack is also a good option because that's gonna give you 11.1 .1 volts. So we're on the upper end of the range. And you'll notice that these battery holders typically come with some bare wire. So how are we gonna get this into our barrel plug? My favorite way to do it is to use a male DC jack adapter. And all you have to do is screw in your wires. All right, good sign. Board is on, couple little flashes right here. Let's see if the pirate will engage. Here there be pirates. And the rechargeable lithium ions are gonna last a lot longer and give those trick-or-treaters the scare they deserve more than that nine volt. Let's say you don't wanna be bothered by having to change batteries. And for your Arduino project, it's okay if it stays plugged into the wall. In that case, look for a nine volt 
two amp wall adapter. Now this particular one I love for prototyping because you can select different voltages. So you see, I have mine dialed up to nine volts. This particular one is a three amp. And this one's even easier because you don't have to fiddle with jack adapters. Here there be pirates. And that is definitely my favorite way to go. It is the barrel jack. It's got polarity protection. Not many ways you can mess this up unless you plug in too many volts. But what if you're working with a smaller board, like one of these nanos that doesn't have the magical barrel jack? Well, I got bad news. You're gonna have to pick another board. I am kidding. I'm gonna show you another way to power your Arduino. And that is by using your VN pin or voltage in. The VN pin follows the same rules as your barrel jack. You wanna to stick to that seven to 12 volts, but there's one major difference. There is no polarity protection. So be sure not to mix up your negatives and positives because you could damage your board. I've modified these wires to include jumpers at the end. So you can see some of my clever electrical tape just for temporary experimentation. And all you have to do is take a jumper wire, cut it in half and twist and solder them together. Having the jumper wire ends makes it super easy to hook right up to your Arduino. So I'm gonna leave our five volt and ground connections in place because they are gonna power the rest of the components. I'm just gonna stick this in the V in right there and then ground of the battery. Well, I'm gonna use the other convenient ground that happens to be right there. Here there be pirates. But say you don't wanna use batteries with your V in pin. You want to use that wall adapter. In that case, I have a female jack adapter and you can see that I have cleverly put in two jumper wires. So they're ready to plug right into the Arduino. I'm going to connect the positive into the V in pin and the negative into the ground pin. And remember, I set my power adapter for nine volts. Here there be pirates. For your simpler Arduino projects where all the components that you're using are powered directly from the Arduino, you now know three different ways to power it. But what if your project now involves motors, servos, or other more high powered components that need a lot more amps than what your Arduino can provide? Let's see the best way to power those. Here is our same prop circuit. And all I did was add a 12 volt DC motor to it. And it's being controlled via this motor driver because this draws too much current. You can't connect it directly to your Arduino. So this handles the power distribution as well as the signal wires, which will handle controlling speed and direction for our motor. So this is gonna plug into a 12 volt wall adapter. And you can probably guess how I'm gonna try and power this first. And that would be ye old barrel jack. So looking at this breadboard power rail up here, I have the motor driver. The power for that is plugged right in here and it will also distribute via this block power directly to the motor. So it completely bypasses the Arduino. And here we have a five volt regulator. So it's gonna take the 12 volts coming in and downgrade that to five volts, which is safe for this board. So let's get the motor hooked up externally. And you can see our happy little light going on there. So the motor's getting power, but nothing is connected to the Arduino yet. And you'll notice that I added this little ground wire here. And that's because anytime you add external components, external wiring, you need to have it go back to a ground that goes back into the Arduino. So everything has to share a common ground. And using my male barrel jack adapter here, I'm just going to grab this power, this juicy power coming from the wall socket and plug right into here. Here there be pirates. So in your final wiring, all you would have to do is take all of the red wires here and solder them together and then take all of these black ones and solder them together along with your common ground. 
and to plug the common ground back into the Arduino, I just cut a jumper wire in half so that way you can solder one end and then have one end to use on one of the ground pins. Now remember, the VIN pins can accept or deliver power. So you can have a little bit of a combination. If your wiring needs to be, sometimes props, projects can be squishy. And so it may make more sense to move our entire motor operation down here and use the V in pin. Red into the V in there and then ground into its buddy ground next door. So what's going to happen here is that the power is going to come through. It's going to hit only the barrel jack, which is going to be plugged into the Arduino, then is going to travel to the V in pin and then continue traveling through these two wires into the motor driver, which will then deliver that power to our motor. So that's another way to do it. Okay, but what if you're using a smaller board where you don't have my beloved barrel jack? You're stuck with the V in pin. I've modified our circuit just a little bit. We have our external power coming in for the motor. And remember, this can easily be replaced by a battery pack here. And I love these little quick connects just for quick prototyping. And I've popped in some jumper wire. So these could be the ones that are plugging in here. And if you trace the power, it goes through to our motor driver. So our motor gets power as well as the driver. Continuing on, it hits this set of wires and I ran out of red. So purple's gonna have to do for the positive. And if you follow them over, they are going into the V in and ground pins of the Arduino. And because we have a ground, already going into the Arduino for these external components, you don't need this extra ground right here. Here there be pirates. So far, we've used components that all live in and around the same voltage range. The Arduino is seven to 12 volts and that powers all of our five volt stuff. And our motor is also 12 volts, but you are going to run into situations where you have a six volt motor, a five volt LED strip, a 12 volt motor, all these different voltages. So how do you power all of this stuff safely from one power supply? Our pirate skeleton prop is getting even more interactive because in addition to the 12 volt motor, I've added a servo and this can take up to six volts. So if I just send the 12 volts through here directly to the servo motor, it's going to fry. So you'll notice this handy little device. It's called a buck converter. All it does is take a higher voltage and convert it down to a lower voltage. And you use this tiny little potentiometer here to set the voltage that comes out the other end. So let's take a closer look at what I got going on here, this hot spaghetti mess. But heck, hot spaghetti mess is the tastiest kind. Here we have the 12 volts coming in. It comes in through this set of wires here. And the first thing it hits is our motor driver, which then disperses that to the motor. Moving on, we have this next set of wires right here. And I just ran out of red and black, so I had to make do with what I got. So purple is our positive and white is our negative. So if you follow these two right here, they go in through this quick connector and into the in of the buck converter. And what comes out is whatever voltage you set. So in our case, something close to six volts. And following this around, you see that it hits this power rail right here. And now you have this set of wires, which goes into our servo. This is our common ground that takes the ground coming from the external power and ties it to this board, whereby this ground wire right here goes to the Arduino. We have one more connection and it's this one going to the Arduino. So it gets the 12 volts. Here there be pirates. Our skeleton pirate now has a jaw servo. But alas, if you don't have that sweet, sweet barrel jack, let's try the VN pin. Here the wiring is exactly the same. All I did was remove this barrel jack here and replace it with this set of wires that goes into the VN and ground pins. And because this white wire is going to an Arduino ground, we no longer need this common ground. Here there be pirates. 
I know some of the wires can be difficult to follow or see where everything is going. So I have wiring diagrams on my website. Link for that is below. And while you're perusing there, you'll see some other goodies like my newsletter where I deliver wiring diagrams, projects, and code directly to your inbox, as well as our mentorship community. So if you're working on a cool project and you're feeling kind of stuck, well, I invite you to join the community. I have live video chat events every week, including office hours, Arduino project challenge, and our live workshops. That way your projects can get more complex more interactive, and just plain cooler. In the meantime, if you have even more ideas of how to power your projects, I'd like to hear about it. Post in the comments below. Guys, I had a blast and hope to see you next time. Bye!